when obstacles are hit, uh, when there are setbacks um, in growth mindset situations, that's just what they are. It's, it's a setback. So, you know, we can look at that to say, what can I learn from this? What can I do better the next time? What can I do more of the next time? Um, you know, is there a different approach? You're listening to Becoming Wildly Resilient, brought to you by University of Kentucky Human Resources, Health and Wellness. In this series, we'll explore a variety of well being topics with experts from the university community in physical, emotional, nutritional, and financial health. Join us, and together we'll discover how we can thrive at work, home, and beyond. Welcome to another episode of Becoming Wildly Resilient. I'm your host, Jacob Hester, and joining me today on this episode is Tommy Leach. Tommy is a training specialist senior with HR Training and Development. Listeners may recognize Tommy from New Employee Orientation or the Supervision Training Programs. Today, we're revisiting mindsets, and we'll dive into growth mindset specifically. Thanks for joining me on the show, Tommy. Not a problem. Glad to be here. So to start, just tell listeners a little more about you and your role at the university. Well, I am a uh, Kentucky kid, born and raised uh, from eastern Kentucky, Um, went to Berea College, where I got a a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, and um, spent a little under 20 years out in the corporate world in different management and and training positions uh, before I came to the university. So I can bring that perspective in uh, to uh, my current role here at UK. And how long have you been at UK? I am coming up on 10 years. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So one question I've been asking guests recently as well is, what is one self-care strategy that you use to personally recharge? Well, I am very much an introvert. uh, So quiet time alone um, is is what I need. So I um, can be in large groups and and large crowds, lots of interaction. sometimes enjoy that. Uh, but to recharge, it's it's quiet time. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm the same way. I'm, I'm one of those people that kind of presents sometimes as an extrovert, but I definitely need that downtime. I can I can thrive in those environments of high extroversion. But like, after that's over, I really need a chance to decompress. And that kind of quiet time is is beneficial for me as well. So I definitely, definitely feel you on that. So you're also the first guest from Training and Development. So can you give us a brief rundown of how you all support UK employees? Yeah, sure. As you mentioned with my role, uh, it's more of the compliance side of training. So for those new regular employees and new supervisors, whether they're hired or promoted, um, we kind of take care care of that need. But we also have professional development training uh, that is available to anyone. And um, there are topics uh, that range from communications to problem solving, interpersonal skills, leadership. Those are um, generally open enrollment classes. Um, so folks can find those on My UK Learning and enroll for them. Some are instructor led, some are WBTs, uh, but our professional development uh, folks can also facilitate with crew staff meetings. Uh, retreats uh, and things like that. We also have a technology training group uh, that provides training on um, a wide spectrum of uh, softwares that range from just general computer use, uh, Microsoft Teams, which is uh, popular now, and uh, the Microsoft Office Suite um, and the Adobe Creative Cloud. And um, they offer different versions of those classes as well. So there's an introductory level, a mid-level, and kind of more advanced topics. And those are also available uh, through My UK Learning, so folks can enroll for those as well. And then our final group um, is more on the system side of things. So um, we have a hand in the online performance evaluation documents, um, getting folks trained and in, in access into my UK learning itself, getting courses loaded, getting WBTs loaded. Um, so we, we kind of support 
folks um, kind of from one end to the other uh, as it relates to my UK learning and, and different things. Yeah, you all are definitely dipping into the intellectual domains of well-being and um, that like occupational as well, I think. And I know you all were really busy over the last 18 months or so with all the emphasis that got put on technology that we kind of got thrust into with the pandemic. So I know your all's work was definitely appreciated um, in helping people adjust to things like Microsoft Teams that we um, now use pretty much daily. I'd say most of us do at least. Yes, it's been a very busy um, 18 months. <laughs> yeah, so let's jump into growth mindset. So what is growth mindset and how would you sort of generally define or explain it? I would say the simple definition of growth mindset is your belief that your uh, talents, your abilities, your skills, your intelligence is something that you can improve over time. And of course, that improvement does involve some work. Um, you do have to put in the effort um, to, to reach um, you know, that goal, to, to improve in those talents and skills and abilities. But it's that uh, belief that it can be improved. So it's kind of like, a, I guess, a positive outlook in where you think you can head. Is that kind of like a, a good summation of that? Yes, um, it, it's the possibility that it can happen. So what would you say are kind of the main characteristics of a growth mindset? Um, I think it's, uh, I don't want to say easy, but um, some things to look for um, is if, if folks look for challenges um, or if they see a change as an opportunity to learn something, uh, that could be an indicator of, of growth mindset. Um, when folks hit obstacles or hurdles, uh, they kind of power through that because they know they have to put in the work, the effort to get to the goal. And uh, feedback is a necessary component of growth mindset. So they're, they're looking for that feedback. They want that input. And even the, the success of others uh, can be inspirational to folks in, in the growth mindset. A lot of the term terminology, I guess you could say, feels like it's in sort of the work world. Um, but how how does this apply into sort of your personal life as well? Yeah, this can really be applied to any uh, situation. Dr. Carol Dweck is the um, psychologist that published this work, and um, you can apply it to parenting, to business, uh, schools, relationship. Uh, Yet yeah, this really can be utilized in any facet. Yeah, I think that was kind of my first exposure to the idea of growth mindset was research around the use of it in schools, particularly with, say, younger students, say, elementary up through even high school. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's kind of grown into the work world. Um, is that is that accurate? Like it's it's it kind of started maybe in more like child development potentially and then worked its way into um, the work world or has it kind of been in both? In my experience, I'm, I'm kind of like with you that um, the, the work world is catching up to this. This uh, research was initially published in 2006, um, but uh, I'll, I think sometimes with other holistic types of uh, practices that the business world can be sometimes slow to adopt. But I think we are seeing that now, um, and especially with COVID uh, and um, folks looking at that to say, you know, hey, we've, we've been knocked down for quite a while here um, with um, the COVID response and, and everything associated with that. So what are some things that we can do to help get folks over that? What would you say is sort of the opposite of a growth mindset thing? Because we're talking about this as being a very positive thing. So if we don't have a growth mindset, what is sort of the other end of maybe that spectrum? Yeah, the other end of the spectrum would be a fixed mindset. And that is where you believe that your skills, your talents, your abilities, your intelligence, it's something that you're born with. And when you hit your, your peak, um, that's it. You know, that's as far as you can go. And so kind of looking at growth mindset versus fixed mindset, is it an all or nothing thing? Or is it like a, maybe situational or is it fluid? You can bounce between the two um, or there's like specific things that you have a growth mindset about and specific things you have a fixed mindset about? We are actually a combination. Um, so there is a mixture 
Um, that was one of the misconceptions early on after Dr. Dweck uh, published the work that folks were like, well, you're either one or the other, uh, but we're actually a mixture. So folks can have more of a growth mindset on certain things, um, while at the same time having a, a more of a fixed mindset on others. Um, so for example, I may have uh, a fixed mindset more on physical abilities, uh, sports, but hey, I can pick up on, on new computer and apps uh, you know, pretty, pretty easily, so that may be more on the growth mindset side. Uh, but yeah, we, we are actually a mixture. So you mentioned some of those misconceptions there. What are some other things that people commonly get wrong about growth mindset, whether that be like a, say, a poor definition or a misapplication or something else along those lines? I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that um, folks think folks that are in a growth mindset don't fear failure or worry about failure, that it's always, you know, kind of behind this guy and flighty. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And, you know, that they're not worried about standards and quality and things like that. Um, so, of course, folks with growth mindset um, do worry about those things. But uh, they, they take that worry, they take that nervousness and kind of hopefully use that um, in, in their prep and in their um, energy to try things over and try different approaches. Um, so you don't get to that failure point. But um, yeah, that, that, I think that's the biggest misconception that's out there. Yeah, I could see how that would be sort of a, yeah, kind of a misapplication of that and thinking that anyone who is all in on the growth mindset that they're somebody who just doesn't really care anymore. Um, and I think from my basic understanding of it, at least, is that that's really not the case, um, that they do still care. And they're just looking for a different approach um, and a way to continue to grow and to learn uh, or to even, say, bounce back from any sorts of adversities and, and that type of thing, too. So I think that's really important to this conversation as well when it comes to resilience. So how would you say growth mindset is related to resilience? Um, I think the biggest relation is that when obstacles are hit, uh, when there are setbacks um, in growth mindset situations, that's just what they are. It's, it's a setback. So, you know, we can look at that to say, what can I learn from this? What can I do better the next time? What can I do more of the next time? Um, you know, is there a different approach? Because uh, a big part of growth mindset is also having the flexibility uh, to try something different if, if that success isn't being met. Because we know, as, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that effort is a part of growth mindset and someone can be putting in the time, they can be working hard, but just not getting that success. Um, and a component of growth mindset is being flexible to try a different approach. So I think that can also help with the resiliency piece to say, there's more than one way to do this. Yeah, I think that flexibility is a key piece of that. Um, and I think that's a, a key component of resilience as well and being able to look for new ways to do things or being flexible um, or looking at things as, say, an opportunity. Um, a lot of those things really do help us when we get those challenges or we get those setbacks and how we, again, sort of approach it as a, as a mindset. So how, how would you say then growth mindset can help make us more resilient? Well, I, I think with this, if we can get more of our components, kind of as we mentioned earlier, if we were a mixture of, of growth and, and fixed mindset, um, I think the more components that we can get from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset um, can assist with that just because there's, there's a future focus to growth mindset as well. Um, so it's not to say that we don't, you know, look at the past or, you know, forget the past. It's, it's that we learn from the past and we learn from that mistake and, again, try to do something different. Did I fully prepare? Um, you know, so we're asking those self-reflective questions, uh, but then also looking at it with a future focus to say, what's, what am I going to do differently the next time? I think that ties really well into the episode I did with Rhonda Henry and Ann Bassoni as well. 
in the episode was moving forward with our well-being. And we really took that approach in looking at it through that sort of timeline almost um, in taking the information of the things that have happened to us to learn from those. And then we had those moments that were the things that were happening to us sort of now and staying present in it, but still having a little bit of that future focus, um, which is something you just mentioned about growth mindset. So, it, I mean, I think it was something that we didn't really define as growth mindset necessarily, um, but the way that we approached that episode and how we how we talked about it and how we were thinking about, say, the last 18 months and those types of things, that was very much a growth mindset, I think. Now that I'm sort of reflecting on it, that was something I did not think about heading into this episode even. Um, but as you were explaining it right there, I, it sort of clicked in my brain. It was like, oh, this was growth mindset. And we just didn't give it the definition of growth mindset. Yeah, absolutely. And um, when I was researching this after I, I, I got Dr. Dweck's book, even looking back to my college career, I was able to identify that, oh, yep, that was the fixed mindset all through that. Um, of course, at the time, this was well before uh, the, the research was published, so there wasn't a term to put to that. But uh, yeah, you can absolutely look back and see where that growth mindset was and where that fixed mindset was. But even going back to the resiliency piece um, with growth mindset, that there, there's also a removal of the judgment piece that comes with the fit a setback or a failure. Um, so we can look at an event to say, that's just what it was, an event. That's not me. Uh, the event failed. I'm not the failure. Um, whereas uh, sometimes with fixed mindset folks, if, if they look at that failure, they internalize that. That kind of becomes part of their identity. So if that happens enough, if it happens, you know, um, often, how you know that can kind of beat beat a person down but with with the growth mindset where that judgment's removed i think that also gives us that opportunity to look at it objectively again kind of separating ourselves from that and recognizing that yes it is a setback what can i do the next time there was a couple of points in there that I think also tie full circle to previous mentions within some of the earlier episodes. Um, that first one, you, you just mentioned it twice, it was that removal of the judgment. And I think that goes back to that idea of giving ourselves grace you know, or giving others grace um, and removing that key piece of like how we're how we're looking at what happened. Um, and, and not saying, like you said, I'm, I am not the failure, whatever it was failed. Um, and so that was something that Amy Rodquist cadet talked about and how you use that language, whether you're actually speaking it or whether you're just thinking it, how that makes a really big difference. And I think that again, ties into the growth mindset and, um, the way that you, that you phrase what it is that happened. And I think that that removal of judgment also, um, we've talked about, uh, this may even go, I think goes back to the very first episode about the idea of grit and grace. And I'm, I'm seeing both of these connection points with growth mindset. Grit is that like sustained effort and interest in a long-term goal. Um, so it's really kind of a process, um, which is what it sounds like that growth mindset is you're, you're thinking of things as a process and sort of never ending. Um, and you're always continually trying to get better and to keep working at them. Um, and then the other side of that was grace, which is that ability to kind of cut yourself some slack when you have a setback or an unexpected outcome. Um, so it's the ability to look at it as a learning opportunity and it's not a complete failure of yourself, um, or something like that. And so, Again, it kind of pops into my brain of like, oh, grit and grace kind of comes back up in this, even though it's not necessarily defined maybe in the literature of growth mindset and seeing the words specifically grit and grace. But the, that grit and grace is also what kind of really helps us become resilient as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, I have been overweight pretty much my whole life and, you know, trying the different diets and doing this and that. But after uh, becoming familiar with growth mindset, you know, applying that uh, process, as you mentioned, it is a process. Um, it's ongoing, but applying that to my weight loss for 
health reasons, um, I, you know, achieved some success with that. And then COVID hit and I stopped doing what led to that success. So prior to being familiar with growth mindset, I would have looked at that to say, well, you know, there's another failed thing. You know, it's just the weight's going to be there and that's it. But with the growth mindset piece, it was that, again, separation to say, hey, you had success. What happened? You stopped doing what led to that success. So what do you need to do now to get back on track? Well, start doing again what led to that initial success. So it's that objectification, so to speak, of, of the process. And I think growth mindset helped me get to that point. So does the word failure actually exist in a growth mindset? Um, Failure may not be explicitly used, setbacks, hiccups, glitches. Um, But even if failure specifically is used without the judgment that's surrounding it, or surrounding what is normally associated with failure, the word, um, it is that motivation to say, what can I do differently the next time? You know, taking the emotions that go along with failure um, as as the energy to try something new, to try something again, um, to, to seek outside assistance where, where it's necessary. You know, it's all in how you process the failure that can help you determine whether you're on the growth mindset uh, or the fixed mindset side. I think about my experience with athletics as well and how it changed a whole lot from when I was an athlete to when I became a coach later on. And I think I was very much one of those people that was in a, a fixed mindset as an athlete, especially in track and field, which is I mean, a lot of it does come down a little bit to sort of the inherent abilities that you have. But um, I think we sometimes play that narrative a little too much in our heads um, and you sort of forget about the ability to get better in your own terms, um, not comparing yourself to somebody else. And so when I became a coach, there was I I mean, I, I could think of hundreds of times that I had conversations with my athletes where something wouldn't go the way they expected it to go, Um, whether that was like they clipped a hurdle um, or they did something strange in the pole vault or something like that in the middle of their run up. And they they would kind of they would sort of get down on themselves and kind of beat themselves up about what just happened. And they're like, oh, I, I failed. Oh, I didn't do this. And this would be like in the middle of the season when the times really don't matter. It's not a championship. Um, We weren't trying to, to win the meet or anything like that, or we weren't trying to set any records that day. Um, And so that conversation would immediately, I would turn and flip that conversation around to what did you learn from this? What, what could you have done better? What can we do better in practice? Um, How could you have prepared a little bit better? Um, What, what happened yesterday or what happened earlier this week, those types of things where we, we turned it into a learning opportunity. And so that I never, I wanted to make sure that I never defined them running, say a quarter of a second slower than they thought they would um, as a failure, because it wasn't a failure. It was still, there was an opportunity always there to learn. Um, And so I think that's kind of a really concrete example from my life um, and how I, sort of lucked into, I guess you could say, growth mindset, because again, it wasn't something that I necessarily was explicitly doing. But um, I think I've been on both sides of the the coin there and and having that fixed mindset as an athlete and understanding that experience and then going through it as a coach and realizing, oh, this is this is not the answer. And there's got to be a better way around that. So I was really excited once I started to learn a little bit about growth mindset and realize what I had been doing and what I had kind of learned through practice as well. Right. And and you mentioned grace before. And sometimes we're we're harder on ourselves and we give the grace to others and not necessarily ourselves. And I, yeah, I think growth mindset can help with that as well. So let's talk about the factors that influence our mindset, particularly whether we have, say, a growth mindset or not. Because I think that it could be a little bit of that nature versus nurture discussion as well as it's. And and I think I I know where this answer may be heading, but do you kind of inherently have a little bit of a growth mindset from the get go? And then you develop that over time, or um, is it something that is just kind of completely developed over time? 
Um, what where does that sort of debate lie within growth mindset? That's an interesting question because uh, folks can you know naturally fall on the spectrum, and you know that's just the way it is uh, because some young kids um, could naturally be drawn to that challenging puzzle where others may say, you know, hey, I, I had success with this one. I'm going to stick with this one. So it can, there is a natural component to that. But there are some external factors that could sometimes unintentionally push folks into a fixed mindset. Um, one of the main examples that's used uh, kind of going back to the sports world that you know, folks can recognize that natural talent and ability. Um, and when that's the praise that the kids get, and if that's the only praise that the kids get, it can unintentionally set up that fixed mindset to say, hey, I am good. Uh, you know, I am talented, and that's all I, that's all I need. Uh, you know, don't need to work at it. I don't need to really put in the effort because, hey, it's natural. Same thing with um, schoolwork and intelligence. And, and we, we think and we thought that we were doing a good thing by telling kids they were smart. But if that's the only praise that these kids received, you know, over time they can start to believe that. And when they do get to that next level and maybe they don't get that test score they've been used to and they start maybe second guessing then to say, well, I've been told I've, I've been smart for all of these years. Now I'm getting B's and C's. Maybe I'm not so smart. So we can unintentionally be pushing folks into that fixed mindset with the type of praise that um, is being given. Now on the work side of that, um, you know, you may have uh, an employee that has really great ideas, they're engaged, they, they want to talk about new things or new ways of doing things. And a supervisor or manager may be more on the fixed mindset side of things and it's just nope and and how how those ideas, how those conversations are shut down or squashed and you know over time, if that's the experience that the employee has, they can be pushed into that fixed mindset to say, well, you know, why bother bringing up a new idea? Why bother bring, bringing up a new topic? This is the way it is, and, and that's, that's it. So there are some external forces that could push folks into the fixed mindset. But on the other side, um, external forces, we can also help folks get to the growth mindset. Yeah, so let's talk about that. I want to talk about how we can get from, if we are maybe in a fixed mindset, how we can move towards a growth mindset and, and solidify that a little bit more. So how can we actually move more towards a growth mindset for ourselves? What are some tricks or strategies or anything like that that we can use? Yeah, well, first is, is learning about growth mindset. Um, as you mentioned in, in reading this and in becoming familiar with this, you're kind of being able to look back and say, hey, I think that was a growth mindset moment, even though at the time you didn't know, you know, there was a label to that. So learning about it is is a first step. Reframing um, is another uh, step. So yourself with others, um, again, with the future focus questions, you know, how can I challenge myself today? Where's an opportunity to learn something new today? And Dr. Dweck is, is famous for the simple word yet. And when we add that on to uh, statements, um, that gives us that future focus. So if you hear others or you hear yourself saying, I'm not good at that or I can't do that, I haven't been able to do that, by putting yet at the end of that, it's now a possibility. So before, if it's, I can't do that, that's kind of final and, and done. But if you say, I can't do that yet, okay, now it, there's at least a possibility. So that kind of goes back to that future focus piece. And then with anything, as you mentioned, this is a process. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, so you can't say, hey, I'm going to wake up tomorrow with a growth mindset. Good intentions, but there is a process to that. So we have to plan. Um, we have to make those um, you know, specific, concrete plans and include milestones and celebrate those milestones and um, you know, 
get that reinforcement, get that energy in, in completing those milestones, but then also be mindful of, of when there is a setback of, uh, you know, how to recover from that, how to refocus and maintain that success. So, yeah, it, it is an ongoing thing. Yeah, the, the reframing um, is, I think, a really important part of resilience as well. And again, sort of looking at those setbacks and looking at any of those challenges or hurdles in your way as an opportunity to learn from them. And they're not going to hold you back for long if they did hold you back at all. Um, and I think you can I think you can almost take like a growth mindset within the process of growth mindset, if that makes sense, almost it's kind of like inception or something, but um, where it's like you're, you're learning about what you've learned related to growth mindset. And it's almost like an inherent goal within itself. Is that, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So the goal can be to work on growth mindset with growth mindset. And I really love the, the power of yet as well. Um, I think another funny example of that one, or at least a personal example would be, um, I sat on a panel recently about podcasting and one of the questions was related to sort of how we promote them um, or the types of things we're doing related to say like social media and TikTok was one that got brought up and I, I'm probably <laughs> like, I don't have TikTok. I, I feel like I might be a little too old for that at this point. Um, but they they asked about that and the more I thought of it, I was like, oh, I should probably take a growth mindset here. Um, and I specifically added the word yet at the end of my response is like, we do not have TikTok yet. And so I left the door open is like, this could be something that we explore. I don't want to say that we're not doing it because then I've closed the door and it is a potential group of people that we don't reach. Um, and if people are heading to platforms like TikTok, we don't want to lose out on that as a way to connect um, and reach people as well. So that was kind of a recent example uh, um, where I've in the moment was it was thinking about my answer and and then realized, oh, I should probably tack a yet on here um, just to leave it to leave the door open and to practice a little bit of what I preach too. yeah, and and even um, and reframing that with others. so if if you you can sometimes see the reaction of a, a young person if they said, yeah, I'm not good at that, and you reframe that for them to say, well, you're not good at that yet. Even that, you know, you can kind of see that glimmer pop up to say, okay, well, and then, you know, follow it up with the, what did we learn from this? What can we do differently? So it, it sets that stage to, to look at things differently. Yeah. And I mentioned the idea of grit earlier as well and how that is about that sustained effort, particularly. Um, and I think that's a, I think you kind of alluded to this already, but that when we're looking at it, on, I guess casting that upon somebody else, it's it's really praising a little bit of the effort, um, not just effort for effort's sake, but effort that is trying to lead somewhere and, and is making connections and is growing from that too. And so it's not just praising the outcome necessarily, whether again, whether that's an internal conversation we're having or whether that's an external conversation, um, it is still about the effort and the process as well should be commended as much as the actual kind of outcome, so to speak. Right, right. And praise, that's part of growth mindset, is praising the effort, the energy that's put into things. Um, it's praising the the person's willingness to try something different if all of that effort uh, wasn't leading to success. Because we know that, you know, sometimes when we, we get stuck in that trap of, well, you know, it's effort, you've got to try hard, you've got to try hard. And people are trying hard, right? They are putting in the effort. So that can be frustrating if that's what they're being told of, well, you just got to try hard. So being aware that, hey, they are trying hard. They're not getting that success. So let's look at a different approach here. Um, so sometimes even with that good intention of, of praising the effort, we do have to look at is it leading to success? You know, and if not, let's look at a different way, um, because that can be very detrimental, especially for young folks, whether that's sports related, whether that's academics. And you're just like, hey, well, you got to put in the effort, and they're studying all hours, and they're 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 trying, but they're not getting that success. So, part of the praise with growth mindset is also praising the willingness to do something different. Yeah, I think that's a really great way to put that. So let's talk about it a little bit in the work world as well. And this is kind of the last point I want to really dive into. 
how can we help others take more of a growth mindset approach? So um, again, specifically in the work world, say for like leaders or supervisors who are trying to cultivate that culture of growth mindset among their teams. Well, one thing that we uh, talk about in our supervision courses is the willingness of managers and supervisors to hear different ideas, uh, because we know that is a part of, of growth mindset. And you know, since we, we do come from different industries and regions and backgrounds, educational institutions, um, we do things differently. So at least being open to the conversation, open to the idea that, hey, it doesn't always necessarily have to be the UK way, or that's the way we've always done that. There can be benefits of looking at things differently. So we know that every idea may not be able to be implemented, whether that's you know a system limitation, budgetary, you know staffing, um, you know whatever. But at least having the conversation, explaining uh, things, and being open in the explanation um, that can, I think, help bolster the employees to say, hey. Yeah, everything may not be able to be implemented, but at least I was heard. You know, I was able to share that idea. And uh, going along with that, being mindful of where you fall on the uh, the, the spectrum of, of fixed and growth mindset. We know that there are some managers, supervisors that are growth mindset in certain situations, and they kind of get frustrated because they see potential in their employees that the employee doesn't see themselves. So that can be frustrating. But even more frustrating, I think, on when that's flipped and the employee is on the growth mindset uh, side and they want to try new things, they want to want to learn new things and knowing that everything may not be done perfectly the first time. But it's the supervisors, the manager that has the fixed mindset and that kind of limits um, the employee's access, you know, opportunities to try different things. So we really try to, to, to stress that and um, at least be mindful of, of where we fall on that spectrum and how it could impact the interactions that we have with employees. Yeah, I liked how you talked about the the difference of ideas and, and hearing those. And I think that setting up a culture like that, it's important to have that diversity of people so that we have that diversity of ideas and thoughts. And I think you sort of inherently are creating a culture of growth mindset when you already have it sort of structurally built in that way too, that you don't have sort of carbon copies of the same it's like say your team is a carbon copy of the same five people. Um, you don't have that if you have a diversity of people that have different backgrounds um, and different ideas and how they bring those together to the common goal of whatever it is, say your department or unit or what have you is is working toward. Um, so I, I think that was a, a key point. And you, you've also mentioned the um, that's the way we've always done it. And that's a phrase that's always kind of just jabs me just a little bit when I hear it, because um, I, I don't really like the idea of doing things just because that's the, the way we've always done it. Um, and the, the natural kind of follow up to that is is why. Um, and I think that's even a simple practice that you can put in. And especially say if you are a leader and you kind of catch yourself saying, well, that's the way we've always done it. There's, there's no real need to change that now. Um, you can kind of take a step back for a second, be mindful and say, well, why? Why am I, why am I saying this? Why do I think this? Um, and why may this not be the best approach that um, we could take at this moment? What happens when we put the word yet on the end of this statement or this idea? Yeah, and um, I'm, I'm there with you because uh, my experience, especially starting at UK, uh, coming from the corporate world, there was, was a lot of that, well, that's the way we've always done it. That's the UK way, or it depends. Now, I've since learned that it depends does have its place in answers at the university uh, because, you know, each college can do its own things to a certain point. You know, each division can as well. But that... Um, We call it kind of the big blue wall sometimes of getting over it or getting around it Um, can be challenging. But as you said, the the why behind it and at least being able to talk about a a new idea can go a long way. Um, An example with that is uh, 
my coworker and I, we, we talked with our manager a few years ago about a program that we were doing that was live at the time and was like, hey, this can be online. But at the time, our, our system would, would not support that. So we, we understood the why it couldn't happen, but that seed had been planted, so to speak. So a few years down the road, when we did get a new system and we were like, hey, this system can support that online program. Remember when we talked about that a few years ago? So, you know, having that conversation initially, you know, we think led to us being able to make that change. Um, again, even knowing that, hey, it may not be able to happen right now, but let's talk about it. Let's put it out there. Yeah, I really like that example. And I think this podcast even is a, a very similar example to that. This was like a, an idea two years ago. And just the just having the conversation about it being a possibility and something that we could look toward in the future, it didn't get shut down immediately in that session that we were in when it got brought up. Um, it was something that's like, maybe not ready. We're not ready for this right now. We don't have the bandwidth for it or something like that. So we tabled it, but it was, it was still that yet conversation um, rather than like, now nah, we can't do that. That's, that's not something that's going to work or that's not something that um, we'll ever be able to do. And then it's kind of shut down and um, cases closed then. So that, I think that's a really good example. I think both of us had that similar experience of like, we had this idea, we think this could be a better way to do something and maybe the timing wasn't right, but the door didn't get shut. And we actually got to see these projects through um, in the future. And I think we're we're both probably a little better for it, too. Absolutely. And and if one thing I've learned at UK in my 10 years, um, uh, the speed of uh, some changes um, may be a little bit longer um, than what I had been used to out in the corporate world. Um but it's not uh, necessarily the case that it would never happen. Um, it just may take a little bit longer to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've been on campus in the say, over the last, say, five years or so, the massive amount of change that's happened, I think, is has been extremely positive. And I think a lot of, like you said, that big blue wall, I think that's being broken down in a lot of places. So it's really encouraging to see people try new things and to apply some creativity into some areas where they traditionally may not have thought were possible. So I think the idea of growth mindset is is definitely catching on in most areas of campus. Um, and I think we'll see it to kind of continue to grow. So that kind of leads into um, the next question. So how can UK employees dive deeper on this topic with training and development? Well, great question, uh, because right now we really only have this in one of our supervision courses. So I don't know if that's more of just a demand type of thing. So if there is more of a demand, we can look in into you know, maybe uh, facilitating sessions. Um, I have facilitated some specific group sections. Um, you know, so so for an entire division, staff meetings, those types of things. So that's a possibility. But if folks have an interest, or if they're like, hey, you know. We think this should be a class, maybe. We'll see about that. Um, but um, our, our group email is train at uky.edu. So folks can always um, f- feel free to, to send a message or um, send an inquiry about that. And so then looking at sort of the broader resources that are available, um, what are some of the tools or resources um, such as like apps or podcasts or websites or books or anything like that that you would recommend on this topic or anything kind of related to your world? Well, I would absolutely recommend Dr. Dweck's book, uh, Mindset. The full title is Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. But uh, she also has uh, done uh, TED Talks, so YouTube, love YouTube. Uh, those are out there. And there is a uh, site that uh, is, I think, directly connected with Dr. Dweck called MindsetWorks.com. And that is, I think, geared more toward the educational side of things, which can can still be applied to all areas. But uh, that is something that um, I would recommend as well. Um, even on Khan Academy, there's a, a great lesson plan around growth mindset and neuroplasticity and that brain connection. So we know that's free. So that that's available, too. 
yeah, we'll link all those in the show notes. So kind of a final fun question for you. What is one song you relate to or use for your own resilience that I could add to our wildly resilient playlist that I've shared on Spotify? Oh, goodness. This I'll say, then I'll probably have to explain because it may not be obvious. Um, but I, um, I get inspiration, motivation, so to speak, from Coal Miner's Daughter by Loretta Lynn. So there, there are no coal miners in my family that we know of. Uh, you know, they are Eastern Kentucky farmers, so there is that connection of it. But I think just being such a fan of hers and reading the books and watching the movie, of course, um, where she was initially had a horrible stage fright. So I've, I've listened to her music and, and especially Coal Miner's Daughter. Um, and I'm like, you know, if Loretta can get up and sing, I can do this. And I think it finally kind of became one of my songs, so to speak. Um, early 20s, I was driving through Atlanta for the first time. And, you know, that wasn't a fun experience for me. And it just so happened that that was um, the CD I had in the car. And I thought, again, if Loretta can get up there and sing, I can do this. So it may not <laughs> make a lot of sense to other folks, um, but that song gives me that hope. Um, you know, it's one of those, I, you know, you can laugh and cry at the same time to it. But but that's that's one of my main main songs. No, I really like that. That's why I like asking this question. And it's a, been a really fun feature for me to keep this playlist going because it, we get to learn a little bit about you. And it was it's interesting to see how you take a song that somebody, like you mentioned at the beginning, would not really see the connection to it. But you have a very concrete example that works for you. And I'm sure there's plenty of other people out there that have songs that inspire resilience in them that really wouldn't make a lot of sense contextually to somebody else. So um, I really appreciate that answer. I like you kind of going off script a little bit and and uh, picking a song that wouldn't traditionally be something that somebody would think about. So yeah, I, I don't know if um, any of the Olympians, you know, had that playing in their headsets <laughs> before they're getting ready for their events. But um, who knows? Maybe maybe they did. You never know. So finally, what what one thing do you want listeners to take away from this episode? I would say that just know that with growth mindset, there is possibility. Um, there's there's hope. Um, we do seem to have more of a sense of ownership when we do practice growth mindset, that we're in charge of what we can control. And, uh, and especially in a world where there's a lot of things that we can't control um, by, by taking control of what we can, with growth mindset, with that future focus, there's, there is hope. Yeah. I think that's a great way to leave this conversation. So I appreciate you so much for coming on and sharing some of your knowledge on growth mindset. All right. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. That'll do it for this episode of Becoming Wildly Resilient. As you digest the episode, I challenge you to think about the things you may have a fixed mindset for, and then focus on one or two of those over the next month. Find a place to add the word yet and see where it leads you. As always, you can find links in the show notes to anything we mentioned throughout the episode, as well as the HR calendar, which features upcoming work life and well-being programming offered by UKHR, like an intuitive eating workshop series, a mindfulness-based stress reduction course, and more. Until next time, take care of yourself and others, and stay well. Thanks for listening to Becoming Wildly Resilient a podcast series from University of Kentucky Human Resources, Health and Wellness. The UK HR Health and Wellness team, consisting of certified health coaches, fitness experts, registered dietitians, and wellness specialists, offer a wide range of online and in-person programming to University of Kentucky employees, retirees, and their spouses. If you enjoyed this episode, you can listen and subscribe to future episodes wherever you find your podcasts. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching at UKY Wellness. There, you'll find links to episode show notes and more. You can also email health and wellness at uky.edu with any questions or suggestions for future episode topics. To learn more about well-being benefits offered by University of Kentucky Human Resources, visit www.uky.edu slash HR slash well-being. Live well.